Hello friends, welcome to Premier UPSC IS. So continuing with the environment, this is the third lecture of environment for prelims UPSC IS. Uh, wetland ecosystems. Introduction. Wetlands are areas that are periodically get inundated with water and support a flourishing community of aquatic organisms including frog and other amphibians. Swamps, marshes and mangroves are examples of wetlands. Wetlands are usually rich in nutrients derived from surroundings and their sediments and have abundant growth of aquatic macrophytes. Classification of wetlands Inland wetland, coastal wetland Inland wetland again classified into both natural and man-made. Natural ones are lakes, ponds, oxbow lakes, waterlogged, swamp or marsh. Man-made are reservoirs, tank, ash pond, coastal wetland, both natural and man-made. Natural are coral reef, tidal flat, mangroves, salt marsh, estuary, lagoon, creek, backwater, bay. Man-made are salt pans, aquaculture ponds, etc. Functions of wetlands. Habitat to aquatic flora and fauna birds. Filtration of sediments and nutrients from surface water. Nutrients recycling, water purification, floods mitigation, groundwater recharging, and buffer shorelines against erosion. Genetic reservoir for various species of plants, example, rice. Estuarine ecosystem. Introduction. An estuary is a place where a river or a stream opens into the sea. Hence, it is formed in the areas where the river meets the sea. It is partially enclosed coastal area at the mouth of the river where its fresh water carrying fertile silt and runoff from the land mixes with the salty sea water. Hence, it represents an ecotone between the fresh water and marine ecosystem and shows a variation of salinity due to mixing of the sea water with fresh water. The complete salinity range from 0.5 to 35 parts per thousand ppt is seen from the head in river head to the mouth of sea end of an estuary. Estuaries are very dynamic and reproductive ecosystems. Since the river flow, tidal range and sediment distribution is continuously changing in them, they are the most productive water bodies in the world and they act as natural water filter. Examples of estuaries are River mouths, coastal bays, tidal marshes, lagoons, and deltas. Coastal lakes which have their connection with the sea through small openings are known as lagoons or backwaters. Deltas are triangular areas bordering the river valley towards the mouth. Formation of estuaries. It can be grouped into four geomorphic categories based on the physical processes responsible for their formation. Rising sea level movement of sand and sandbars, glacial processes, and tectonic processes. Mangroves. These are the characteristic littoral plant formation of tropical and subtropical sheltered coastlines. Here, trees and bushes growing below the high water level of spring tides, which exhibits a remarkable capacity for salt water tolerance. They are basically evergreen plants which grow on sheltered shores, typically on tidal flats, deltas, estuaries, bays, creeks, and the barrier islands. Since mangroves are located between the land and sea, they represent the best example of the ecotone. They require high solar radiation and they have the ability to absorb fresh water from saline or brackish water. It produces pneumatophores, blind roots, to overcome the respiratory problem in the anaerobic soil conditions. Leaves of mangroves trees are thick and contain salt secreting glands. They exhibit viviparity mode of reproduction that means seeds germinate in the tree itself before falling to the ground. This is an adaptive method to overcome the problem of germination in saline water. They protect the shoreline from the effect of cyclones and tsunamis. Mangroves in India. Indian mangroves
mangroves in India. Indian mangroves are distributed along the east and the west coast at Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Mangroves along the east coast are more luxuriant and considerably diverse due to the presence of nutrient-rich deltas formed by the rivers Ganga, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. Environmental Pollution Introduction Pollution refers to the contamination of the environment by the introduction of contaminants that can cause damage to environment and harm or discomfort to humans and other living species. It is the addition of another form of energy or form of any substance to the environment at a rate faster than the environment can accommodate it by dispersion, breakdown, recycling or storage in some harmless form. It began since the Industrial Revolution and is increasing day by day and causing irreparable damage to Mother Earth. Hence, pollution may be defined as the addition of undesirable material into the environment as a result of human activities. The agents which cause environmental pollution are called pollutants. A pollutant may be defined as a physical, chemical or biological substance or unintentionally released into the environment which is directly or indirectly harmful to humans and other living organisms. Environmental pollution has its own set of causes, effects and solutions. Broadly, environmental pollution consists of the following six basic types of pollution. Air, water, soil, noise, land and light. Air pollution. Air pollution may be defined as the presence of any solid, liquid or gaseous substance including noise and radioactive radiation in the atmosphere in such concentration that may be directly and indirectly injurious to humans or other living organisms, plants, property or interferes with normal environmental processes. Air pollutants are the, of the following two types. Particulate pollutants and gaseous pollutants. Particulate pollutants. Particulate matter suspended in air is dust and soot released from the industrial chimneys. Their size ranges from 0 0.001 to 500 micrometers in diameter. Particles less than 10 micrometers float and move freely with the air currents. Particles which are more than 10 micrometers in diameter settle down. Particles less than 0.02 micrometer form persistent aerosols. The major source of SPM, that is suspended particulate matter, are vehicles, power plants, construction activities, oil refinery, railway yard, marketplace industries, etc. Gaseous pollutants. Gaseous pollutants, along with the particulate matter in the form of smoke, are released by power plants, industries, different types of vehicles which use petrol, diesel as fuel. Carbon compound that is carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, sulfur compound that is sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, nitrogen compounds like nitrogen oxide and nitrous oxide, hydrocarbons like benzene, ethylene, SPM that is any solid and liquid particle suspended in the air such as flush, dust, lead, etc. Fibers that is cotton, wool, and jute. Causes and effects. Sometimes such substances may come from natural sources like dust and smoke arising from the forest fires or volcanic eruptions. Pollutants are also added to the atmosphere by a certain set of human activities. The sources of air pollutants are factories, automobile exhausts, power plants and burning of firewood and dung cakes. Vehicles produce high levels of pollutants like carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, carbon dioxide and smoke. Carbon monoxide is produced from the incomplete burning of fuels such as diesel and petrol. It is a poisonous gas as it reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Smoke may contain oxides of nitrogen which combine with other air pollutants and fog to form smoke. Smog is a thick like, fog-like layer formed in the atmosphere especially during winters. The smog causes breathing difficulties such as cough, asthma and wheezing in children and even adults. Smog is equal to smoke plus fog. Petroleum refineries are a major source of gaseous pollutants like nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. It can cause several respiratory problems including permanent lung damage. 
other kinds of pollutants are chlorofluorocarbons which are used in air conditioners refrigerators and aerosol sprays chlorofluorocarbons damage the ozone layer of the atmosphere measures to prevention and control industrial pollution can be greatly reduced by the following measures use of cleaner fuels such as liquefied natural gas lng in power plants fertilizer plants etc employing environment friendly industrial processes installing devices which reduce the release of pollutants such as filters electrostatic precipitators inertial collectors scrubbers gravel bed filters or dry scrubbers etc increasing the height of chimneys closing industries which pollute the environment shifting of polluting industries away from the cities and heavily populated areas development and maintenance of the green belt of adequate width vehicular pollution can be controlled by the following measures the emission standards for automobiles bharat stage 6 need to be followed strictly in cities like delhi motor vehicles need to obtain pollution under control puc certificate at regular intervals hybrid vehicles need to be introduced and promoted at a large scale to reduce the emission of sulfur dioxide sulfur content in the diesel has been reduced to 0.05% addition of lead in petrol has been banned to prevent the emission of lead particles with the vehicular emission alternate fuels like cng is being encouraged for use in public transport vehicles public transport and share ridings need to be encouraged rather than one person riding on the personal vehicle indoor air pollution indoor air is air within a building such as the home office classroom shopping center hospital or gym etc we say indoor air pollution if the indoor air is contaminated by smoke smells chemicals or particles unlike outdoor air pollution the effect of indoor air pollution is mainly health related and less of an environmental issue paints carpets furniture etc in rooms may give out volatile organic compounds vocs use of disinfectants fumigants etc may release hazardous gases in hospitals pathogens present in waste remain in the air in the form of spores in colder regions building and heating methods make use of air tight spaces less ventilation and energy efficient heating therefore making the residents more prone to the effects of indoor air pollution measures of indoor air pollution use of wood and dung cakes should be replaced by cleaner fuels such as biogas kerosene or electricity use of biogas and lpg need to be encouraged improved stoves for cooking like smokeless chulhas have high thermal efficiency and reduced emission of pollutants including smoke the house designs should incorporate a well ventilated kitchen further segregation of waste pre treatment at source sterilization of rooms will also help in checking indoor air pollution water pollution addition or presence of undesirable substances in water is called water pollution whenever harmful substances such as toxic chemicals sewage silt etc get mixed with water the water becomes polluted the substances that, that pollute water are called water pollutants sediments brought by runoff water from agricultural fields and discharge of untreated or partially treated sewage and unindustrial effluents disposal of fly ash or solid waste into or close to a water body cause severe problems of water pollution sources of water pollution point source when pollutants are discharged from a specific location such as a drain drip pipe carrying industrial effluents discharge directly into a water body it represents point source pollution non point source the non point sources include discharge of pollutants from diffuse sources or from a larger area such as runoff from agricultural fields grazing lands construction sites abandoned mines and pits roads streets etc causes and effects natural sources of pollution of water are soil erosion leaching of minerals from rocks and decaying of organic matter water pollution is majorly caused by a variety of human activities such as industrial agricultural and domestic agricultural runoff laden with excess fertilizers and pesticides industrial effluents with toxic substances and sewage water with human and animal wastes 
pollute the water thoroughly. Oil refineries, textile and dyes, paper factories and sugar mills and chemical factories cause chemical contamination of water. The chemicals released include lead, arsenic and fluorides which lead to toxicity in plants and animals. Sedimentation increases turbidity of water because of sediments reduces the penetration of light in the water that reduces photosynthesis by aquatic plants. The soil is also affected by impure water causing changes in the growth of worms, acidity etc. Water pollution is a major source of waterborne diseases and other health problems. Water contaminated with sewage may contain bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites which cause diseases like typhoid, cholera and jaundice. Thermal pollution. Power plants, chemical and other industries use a lot of water for cooling purposes and the used hot water is discharged into rivers, streams or oceans. The, was, the waste heat from the boilers and heating processes increases the temperature of the cooling water. Discharge of hot water increases the temperature of the receiving water by 10 to 15 degrees centigrade above the ambient water temperature. This is called as thermal pollution. Increase in water temperature decreases dissolved oxygen in the water, which adversely affects aquatic life. Unlike terrestrial ecosystems, the temperature of water bodies remains steady and does not change very much. Accordingly, aquatic organisms are adapted to a uniform steady temperature of the environment and any fluctuation in water temperature severely affects aquatic plants and animals. Biological Oxygen Demand BOD Bio Biochemical oxygen demand or biological oxygen demand is the amount of dissolved oxygen needed or demanded by aerobic biological organisms to break down organic material present in a given water sample at certain temperature over a specific time period. BOD is an important parameter that indicates water quality because it provides an index to assess the effect discharge the wastewater will have on the receiving environment. The higher the BOD value, the greater the amount of organic matter or food available for oxygen consuming bacteria. If the rate of dissolved oxygen consumption by bacteria exceeds the supply of dissolved oxygen from aquatic plants, algae photosynthesis or diffusing from air, unfavorable conditions occur. Depletion of the dissolved oxygen causes stress on the aquatic organisms, making the environment unsuitable for life. Further, dramatic depletion can lead to hypoxia or anoxic environments. BOD is also used extensively for wastewater treatment as decomposition of organic waste by microorganisms is commonly used for treatment. So, biological oxygen demand is also used for wastewater treatment. Control of water pollution The following measures can be adapted to control water pollution. The water requirement should be minimized by altering the techniques involved. Water should be reused with water recycling or without treatment. Recycling of water after treatment should be practiced to the maximum extent possible. The quantity of wastewater discharge should be minimized. Soil pollution. Addition of substances which adversely affect the quality of soil or its fertility is known as soil pollution. Solid waste is a mixture of plastics, cloth, glass, metal and organic matter, sewage, sewage sludge, building debris generated from households, commercial and industries establishments add to soil pollution. Generally polluted water also pollutes the soil. Fly ash, iron and steel, slag, medical and industrial waste disposed on land are important sources of soil pollution. Causes and effects. All soils, whether polluted or unpolluted, contains a variety of compounds, contaminants which are naturally present. Such contaminants include inorganic ions, metals and salts, example, carbonates, phosphates, sulfates, nitrates, and many organic compounds such as proteins, lipids, DNA, fatty acids, hydrocarbons, pH, alcohols, etc. These compounds are mainly formed through soil microbial activity and decomposition of organisms, that is, example, animals and plants. Apart from this, various compounds get into the soil from the atmosphere, for instance with precipitation of water as well as by wind activity or other types of soil disturbances and from surface water bodies and shallow groundwater flowing through the soil. When the quantity of soil contaminants exceed natural levels, what is naturally present in various soils, the soil is said to be polluted.
soil pollution affects ecosystem vegetation water resources and harmful when exposed to humans over a long period measures reduce the deforestation and focus on reforestation avoid intensive farming practices indiscriminate disposal of soiled waste should be avoided the organic matter from domestic agriculture and other waste should be segregated the industrial waste prior to disposal should be properly treated for removing hazardous materials biomedical waste should be separately collected and incinerated moreover to control soil pollution it is essential to stop the use of plastic bags and instead of use bags of degradable materials like paper jute and cloth bioremediation bioremediation is a biotechnical process which is used to clean up the environmental contamination it is a type of waste management technique that involves the use of organisms to remove or utilize the pollutants from a polluted area there are other types of waste management technique which include solid waste management nuclear waste management etc bioremediation is different from other methods as it uses no toxic chemicals Bioremediation relies on stimulating the growth of certain microbes that use contaminants as a source of food and energy. It needs a combination of right temperature, nutrients, and food. Otherwise, it may take much longer for the cleanup of contaminants. Bioremediation can either be done in situ at the site of the contamination itself or ex situ at a location away from the site. Types of bioremediation. Bioremediation is of the following three types. Biostimulation. The bacteria is stimulated to initiate the process. The contaminated soil is initially mixed with special nutrient substances, including other vital components, either in the form of liquid or a gas. It stimulates the microbial growth, thus resulting in quick and efficient removal of contaminants by microbes and other bacteria. Bio augmentation. At times, there are certain sites where microorganisms are required to extract the contaminants. For example, municipal wastewater. In these special cases, the process of bio augmentation is used. There is a major drawback in this process. It becomes almost impossible to control the growth of microorganisms in the process of removing the particular contaminant. Intrinsic bioremediation. The process of intrinsic bioremediation is most effective in the soil and water because of these two biomes, which always have a high probability of being full of contaminants and toxins. The process of intrinsic bioremediation is mostly used in underground places like underground petroleum tanks. In such a place, it is difficult to detect leakage, and contaminants and toxins can find their way to enter through these leaks and contaminate the petrol. Thus, only microorganisms can remove the toxins and clean the tanks. Noise pollution. Noise by definition is sound without value or any noise that is unwanted by the recipients. Noise pollution is generally defined as a regular exposure to increase the sound levels that may lead to adverse effects on human health or other living organisms. Noise level is measured in terms of decibels dB. According to WHO, optimum noise level as 45 decibels by day and 35 decibels by night, anything above 80 decibels is hazardous. Causes and effects. Noise in industries such as stone cutting and crushing, steel forgings, loudspeakers, shouting by hawkers, selling their wares, movement of heavy transport vehicles, railways and airports are harmful to human health. It leads to the following deficiencies. Irritations in an increased blood pressure, loss of temper and hypertension, decrease in work efficiency, loss of hearing which may be first temporary but can become permanent in the noise stress continues. Severely affecting the child development, a child is more sensitive towards the noise pollution. Psychological infections and noise annoyance. Whales are among the most affected mammals as their hearing helps them orient themselves, feed and communicate. Other than marine life, land animals are also affected by noise pollution in the form of traffic, firecrackers, etc. And birds are especially affected by the increased air traffic. Measures. Following steps can be taken to control or minimize the noise pollution. Road traffic noise can be reduced. Noise abatement measures include creating noise mounds, noise attenuation walls, and well-maintained roads and smooth surfacing of roads, retrofitting of locomotives continuously, welded rail track, use of electric locomotives or deployment of quieter rolling stock will reduce the noises emanating from trains. Air traffic noise can be reduced by appropriate insulation and introduction of noise regulations. Industrial noises can be reduced by soundproofing equipment. 
power tools very loud music and land movers public functions using loud speakers etc should not be permitted at night use of horns alarms refrigeration units etc is to be restricted use of firecrackers which are noisy and cause air pollution should be restricted a green belt of trees is an efficient noise absorber radioactive pollution Radioactive pollution is defined as an increase in the natural radiation levels caused by human activities. There are many sources of radioactive pollution such as nuclear waste from the nuclear power plants, mining processes, nuclear material, etc. It is estimated that about 20% of the radiation that are exposed to is due to human activities. The human activities that can release radiation involve activities with radioactive materials such as mining, processing and handling of radioactive materials, handling and storage of radioactive waste. Also, the use of radioactive reactions to generate energy, nuclear power plants along with the use of radiation in medicine, example x-rays and research. The effects of radioactive radiation pollution can vary significantly between individuals. While the exposure to high amounts of radiation generates almost immediately chronic diseases, cancer or even sudden death in rare cases of extreme pollution, small amounts of radiation can cause diseases that are not so serious and develop over the course of time. The biological damage resulting from ionizing radiations is generally termed as radiation damage. Pollutants in the environment Movements of pollutants. Movements of pollutants involves the following two main processes such as bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Bioaccumulation. It explains how pollutants enter a food chain. In this stage, there is an increase in the concentration of a pollutant from the environment to the first organism in a food chain. Biomagnification. Biomagnification refers to the tendency of the pollutants to concentrate as they move higher from one trophic level to the next. Thus, in this stage, there is an increase in concentration of a pollutant from one link in a food chain to another. In order for biomagnification to occur, the pollutant must be long-lived, fat-soluble and biologically active. For example, DDT. If a pollutant is short-lived, it will be broken down before it can pose a risk to life or become dangerous. If the pollutant is water-soluble, it will be excreted by the organism. Pollutants that dissolve in fats, however, may be retained for a long time in their body. Pollutants and trophic level Pollutants, especially the non-biodegradable ones, move through the various trophic levels in an ecosystem. Non-degradable pollutants are the materials that cannot be metabolized by the living organisms. Pollutants such as Chlorinated hydrocarbons, organochlorine or CHC, are hydrocarbons whose some are or most hydrogen atoms have been replaced by chlorine. Example, endosulfan, DDT, etc. A variety of simple chlorinated hydrocarbons include chloroform, dichloromethane, and carbon tetrachloride. Applications of chlorinated hydrocarbon. Production of vinyl chloride, almost all of which was converted into polyvinyl chloride, PVC. Example are PVC pipes. Chloroform, dichloroethane, uh, dichloromethane, and trichloromethane are useful solvents. These solvents are immiscible with water and effective in cleaning applications such as dry cleaning and degreasing. Pesticides and insecticides such as heptachlor, DDT and endosulfan are CHCs that is chlorinated hydrocarbons. Effects of chlorinated hydrocarbons. Dioxins are produced when organic matter is burned in the presence of chlorine and some insecticides that is DDT which are persistent organic pollutants. They are highly toxic organic compounds produced as a byproduct in some manufacturing processes. DDT gets accumulated in the food chains and causes reproductive problems, example, egg shell thinning in certain bird species. In Arctic areas, particularly high levels are found in marine mammals. These chemicals concentrate in mammals and are even found in mother's breast milk. E-waste Irreparable computers and other obsolete electronic goods are known as electronic waste or e-wastes. E-wastes are usually buried in landfills or incinerated. Over half of the e-wastes generated in the developed world are exported to developing countries mainly to China, India and Pakistan. At the importing countries, metals like iron, copper, silicon, nickel and gold are recovered during the process of recycling of e-waste. Developed countries have specifically built facilities for recycling of e-waste. 
but recycling in developing countries often involves manual participation therefore exposing workers to toxic substances present in e-waste recycling is the only solution for the treatment of e-waste provided it is carried out in an environment friendly manner fly ash fly ash is byproduct recovered from gases of burning coal in thermal power plants during the production of electricity they are micron sized earth elements primarily consists of alumina silica and iron fly ash pollutes air and water and may cause heavy metal pollution in wet water bodies fly ash affects the vegetation as a result of its direct deposition on leaf surfaces or indirectly through its deposition on the soil applications fly ash is now being used for making bricks and as landfill material fly ash can be used as a replacement for some of the portland cement contents of the concrete it can be used in the construction of road embankments filling the low lying area development in agriculture as a soil conditioner etc fly ash utilization policy following efforts have been made to make the optimum utilization of fly ash as an environmentally sustainable and economically viable product union government has made it mandatory for use of fly ash bricks in construction activities happening 500 km around thermal power plants gst rates on fly ash and its products have been reduced to 5% ash park has been developed an awareness program for utilization of fly ash and its products have been conducted to facilitate 100% ash utilization by all coal based thermal power plants a web portal for monitoring fly ash generation and utilization data of thermal power plants and a mobile based application titled ash track has been launched by the government it aims to help to establish a link between fly ash users and power plant executives for obtaining fly ash for its use in various areas Maharashtra is the first state to adopt the fly ash utilization policy. Petroleum or pet coke. Petroleum coke or pet coke is a solid carbon rich 90% carbon and 3 to 6% sulfur material derived from the refining of crude oil. It is categorized as bottom of the barrel fuel. It is a dirtier alternative to coal and emits 11% more greenhouse gases than coal and nearly 17 times more sulfur than coal. Pet coke or petroleum coke is a source of fine dust which can get lodged in the lungs. It may contain vanadium which is a toxic metal. Sulfur heavy pet coke and other polluting fuels such as furnace oil are widely used by cement factories, paper mills, dyeing units, brick kilns and ceramic businesses india is the world's largest consumer of pet coke and imports over half its annual pet coke consumption from the united states central government has ba banned the import of pet coke for use as fuel however it is allowed only for cement calcium carbide lime kiln and gasification industries where it is used as the feedstock or in the manufacturing process on actual user condition government initiatives for environmental protection introduction the indian government has been made for the improvement and protection of environment by incorporating changes to the constitution of india originally our constitution did not contain any direct provision regarding the protection of the natural environment but later on the indian constitution was amended to include protection of the environment as a constitutional mandate The forty-second Constitutional Amendment Act added a clause G to Article Fifty-One A of the Indian Constitution to make it a fundamental duty to protect the and improve natural environment. Article Fifty-One G states it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment, including forests, lakes, rivers, and wildlife, and have compassion for living creatures. there is also a directive given to the state for the protection and improvement of the environment under the directive principles of state policy article 48a states the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country 
Further, the Department of Environment was established in India in 1980 to ensure a healthy environment for the country. This later became a full-fledged Ministry of Environment and Forests in 1985. In 2014, this was renamed as the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, MOFC, to give the importance to the worldwide concern of global warming and climate change as a result of it. The constitutional provisions are backed by a number of legislation such as acts and rules. These acts generally delegate powers to the regulating agencies to make rules for the purpose of their implementation. Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974 the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act was enacted in 1974 to provide the prevention and control of water pollution and for the maintaining or restoring of wholesomeness of water in the country. The Act vests regulatory authority in state pollution control boards and empowers these boards to establish and enforce effluent standards for factories discharging pollutants into water bodies. A Central Pollution Control Board performs the same functions for union territories and formulates policies and coordinates activities of different state boards. The Act was amended in 1988. The 1988 amendment strengthened the Act's implementation of the pollution provisions. Board may close a defaulting industrial plant or withdraw its supply of power or water by an administrative order. The penalties are more stringent and a citizen suit provision supports the enforcement machinery. The Act was last amended in 2003. Water Cess The Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act Cess Act was enacted in 1977. It aims to provide for the levy and collection of a cess on water consumed by persons operating and carrying on certain types of industrial activities. This cess is collected with a view to augment the financial resources of the central board and the state boards for the prevention and control of water pollution constituted under the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981 This Act provides for the prevention, control and abatement of air pollution. To implement the decisions taken at the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment Health at Stockholm, in June 1972, the Indian Parliament enacted the Nationwide Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act in 1981. The Air Act's framework is similar to that of the Water Act of 1974. To enable an integrated approach to environmental problems, the Air Act expanded the authority of the central and state boards established under the Water Act to include air pollution control. According to the Act, air pollution means the presence in the atmosphere of any air pollutant. An air pollutant means any solid, liquid or gaseous substance present in the atmosphere in such a concentration as may be or tend to be injurious to a human beings or other living creatures or plant or property or environment. Prior to its amendment in 1987, the Air Walk Act was enforced through mild court administered penalties on violations. National Clean Air Program NCAP. It was launched by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change MOFC in January 2019. The NCAP is a mid-term five-year action plan with 2019 as the first year. It is a pollution control initiative to reduce the concentration of particles, particle like matter PM10 and PM2.5 by 20 to 30 percent by 2024. It will have 2017 as the base year for the purpose of comparison. It is to be implemented in one or two non-attainment cities which are chosen on the basis of ambient air quality India 2011-2015 and WHO report 2014 and 2018. NCAP is institutionalized by respective ministries and organized through intersectoral groups which include Ministry of Road and Transport and Highway, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, Ministry of Heavy Industry, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, Niti Aayog, CPCB, uh, Central Pollution Control Board, experts from the industry, academy and civil society. It is not a legally binding instrument and CPCB is the executing authority. Objectives of the NCAP Stringent implementation of mitigation measures for prevention, control and abatement of air pollution. Augmentation of stagnant air quality monitoring network across the country. Augment public awareness and capacity building measures. 
significance of NCAP strives towards framing a national framework of for air quality management with a time bound reduction target multi sectoral collaboration and participatory approach transboundary nature of air pollution links health and pollution suffer system of air quality and weather forecasting it monitors the following pollutants uv index particulate matter 1 particulate matter 2.5 particulate matter 10 black carbon sulfur dioxide ozone nitrogen oxides mercury carbon monoxide benzene toluene and xylene it is implemented in four cities of india delhi mumbai pune and ahmedabad it is developed by indian institute of tropical meteorology pune and operationalized by indian meteorological department imd suffer accelerates public awareness and preparedness of air pollution and weather extremes it also leads to a better understanding of linkages among emissions weather pollution and climate it monitors all weather parameters like temperature rainfall humidity wind speed and wind direction environment protection act 1986 in the wake of the bhopal gas tragedy the government of india enacted the environment protection act of 1986 under article 253 of the constitution the act is an umbrella legislation designed to provide a framework for central government coordination of the activities of the various central and state authorities established under previous acts such as the water act and the air act the purpose of the act is to implement the decisions of the united nations conference on the human environment that is Stockholm Conference 1972 In this act environment is defined to include water air and land and the interrelationships which exist among water air and land and human beings and other living creatures plants microorganisms and property and environmental pollution is the presence of pollutant defined as any solid liquid or gaseous substance present in such a concentration as may be or may tend to be injurious to the environment Hazardous substances include any substance or preparation which may cause harm to human beings other living creatures plants microorganisms property or the environment environmental impact assessment environmental impact assessment the ministry of environment forest and climate change mofsi under the environmental assessment protection act of 1986 initiated the environmental impact assessment eia in 1994 it was re-engineered re in 2006 EIA is a tool that links the environment with the developmental activities it is an assessment of the impact of industrial and economic development on the environmental health it is a participatory tool for informed decision making it ensures that the development of a project in environmentally sound and sustainable and within limits of the capacity of assimilation and regeneration capacities of the ecosystem the important aspects of the eia are the following risk assessment and environmental management and post product monitoring eia provides a cost effective method to eliminate or minimize the adverse impact of development projects In order to carry out an environmental impact assessment the following are essential assessment of existing environmental status assessment of various factors of the ecosystem analysis of adverse environmental impacts impact on people in the neighborhood The core values of environmental impact assessment are integrity utility and sustainability step five process of environmental impact assessment are screening scoping baseline data impact prediction mitigation measures and eia report public hearing law decision making monitoring as per the clearance conditions risk assessment etc